the so-called nifty center theorem, otherwise known as the G mod Z theorem, puts constraints on what we can get for a factor group if we quotient any group G by its center, the subgroup that consists of all the elements that commute with everything in the group. And it says that the only way that that quotient can be a cyclic group is if that quotient ends up being a trivial group because my original G is abelian. So any abelian group, if we take the quotient by the center, we know we're gonna get a trivial group because the center is everything for an abelian group. But the fact that this goes the other way is what's interesting. That the only case in which the quotient of a group by its center is a cyclic group is when G is abelian, and therefore this quotient is trivial. So the quotient of G by the center of G is only ever a trivial factor group or a non-cyclic factor group. Let's take a look at how this fact can be used in a different context. In this problem, we're given some very sparse information about a group G. It's a group that has at least four elements in it. And we're also given that there exists a non-trivial homomorphism from G into the cyclic group of order four, Z4. What I wanna do is I wanna prove, if I can, that the kernel of this homomorphism cannot be exactly equal to the center of G in this case. So this is kind of an interesting statement here, right? The claim is that if this non-trivial homomorphism from G to Z mod four exists, then either its kernel, the set of elements of G that are getting sent to the identity, either that kernel has to be smaller than the center, in other words, there has to be something in the center which is not going to the identity element, or this kernel would have to be bigger than the center, so there'd be something besides the center. It can't kill the center and only the center, is what this is kind of telling us. And so we're going to use the approach that we've been using when thinking about homomorphisms, which is, let's start by imagining that we could list out all of the normal subgroups of G, my domain, and also all of the subgroups, period, of Z4, the target group of my homomorphism because those are going to be the possible kernels for my homomorphism and the possible images for my homomorphism, respectively. So what normal subgroups would G have? Well, we don't know anything about G, but we do know for sure that the trivial subgroup is normal in G, that the whole group is normal in G, and that also the center of G is normal in G. And there might be a bunch of other normal subgroups. There might be no other normal subgroups. It might be the case that the center is equal to one of these other two options. We don't know, and that's kind of the problem. So we don't have any information, really, about what the normal subgroups of G are. On the other hand, we do know what the normal subgroups of Z4 are. In fact, all subgroups of Z4, after all, because Z4 is a uh, abelian group, all of its subgroups are normal. And so there are only three, right? The cyclic group Z4, the whole group itself, the cyclic subgroup generated by two, which has two elements, and the cyclic subgroup generated by the identity element, which only has the identity in it. So we don't have really any information about G that's gonna help us to be more concrete about its normal subgroups. There's a lot of unknowable options over here. So it's probably gonna be a lot easier so that we don't have to think about all the normal subgroups that could be in this list to take the conclusion we're trying to draw and negate it to set ourselves up for an indirect proof. So rather than trying to deduce that the kernel is not the center, let's begin by assuming that the kernel is the center and see if we can arrive either at a contradiction or at a negation of the hypothesis of this particular theorem. So let's assume for the moment that the kernel of my homomorphism is exactly equal to the center. If that's the case, then the factor group of G by its kernel is exactly G mod the center of G. Okay, then what does the first isomorphism theorem say? First isomorphism theorem says that this factor group, the factor group of G by the kernel of phi, has to be isomorphic to the image of phi. And one of these three subgroups of Z mod four has gotta be the image of phi. But what do you notice about these subgroups? Because Z4 is a cyclic group, all of its subgroups are cyclic groups as well. And so we are forced to conclude by the first isomorphism theorem that G mod the center of G, G mod ZG, must be cyclic. And therefore, by the nifty center theorem, if G mod ZG is a cyclic group, that means that G must be an abelian group. And if G is an abelian group, that must mean that the center of G consists of all of G. Every element commutes with every element in G because G is abelian. And therefore, there is no difference, in fact, between the normal subgroup, which is the center of G, and the normal subgroup, which is all of G. Those are the same thing. And if that's the case, then G mod ZG, the factor group of G by its center, is the factor group of G by itself, which is a trivial group. And so this 
factor group here, G mod ZG, is trivial. But since this factor group is isomorphic to the image of my homomorphism by the first isomorphism theorem, that must mean that G mod ZG is isomorphic to a trivial group, and the trivial group is the image. Therefore, what is the homomorphism doing? It's sending all the elements of G to the identity. So what we've shown here is if the kernel of my homomorphism is equal to the center of the group, that must mean that the image of my homomorphism is trivial, and therefore my homomorphism is trivial. And that negates the assumption that we put here in the statement of my theorem. And so this consists of an indirect proof of this theorem. And then two ingredients that we needed were the first isomorphism theorem, which is what guaranteed that this factor group is isomorphic to the image. And the image had to be one of these subgroups of Z4, all of which were cyclic. And then the nifty center theorem, which says that any time the quotient of a group by its center is cyclic, that must have meant that the group was abelian and therefore that quotient is trivial. So remember, another way of understanding what the nifty center theorem says is it says that the quotient of a group by its center is only ever going to be trivial in the case where the group is abelian, or it's going to be non-cyclic in any case in which G is not abelian.